Hi guys, sorry for this. Uh, I'm just gonna come out right and say Warner Brothers is trash. Uh, I've uploaded this video maybe like three or four times now. I mean, I've kept to the copyright stuff and I'm trying not to get a copyright strike so I keep taking them down instead of challenging them and re-editing the video myself and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, copy, uh, but Warner Brothers really doesn't like the negative reviews for this film. So they keep striking everybody's channels who, who uploads a negative review about this movie. I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, this movie is not what it was advertised. It is not a horror film. It is a action film at, at most, uh, kind of like a supervillain origin film. Um, the, basically, the entire plot that it was like revealed in the, in the trailer is not at all what this movie is about. Uh, I'm going to give you the spoiler twist right now. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's the dark half from Stephen King. Basically, she's got a conjoined twin on her back who takes over her body. That's it. That's all it is, you know. And if, if Warner Brothers wants to be salty about that, well, then that's just too fucking bad. Um, anyway, so I'm going to upload this video with a huge uh, uh, logo across the thing. Uh, I had to cut out all the scenes, basically, so that Warner Brothers cannot complain that I use any of their material. Uh, but if you want to see the original video, I will be uploading it to Patreon. So check that out there, or you can go on our Discord. I'll have it up on there, too. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and please enjoy the video. Bye. Welcome back, everyone, to another review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Raging Anybody, and today we're taking a trip through the spooky world of Malignant, a 2021 offering by James Wan that looks like it was inspired by Stephen King's The Dark Half and superhero action sequences. But before we get started, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to slash that bell icon to stay notified of our latest releases. Alright, let's get to the scares. The film starts off in a research hospital lab looking building built on the side of a cliff overlooking the ocean. Dr. Florence Weaver starts on camera and begins to give a detailed account of the experiment that they've been working on. She talks about her subject, Gabriel, becoming too strong to contain any longer, both physically and psychically. Suddenly, she is interrupted by a security guard who warns her that he's tried to escape again. Another doctor joins them, saying they tried to subdue him via electric shock, but it had no effect. All throughout the hospital, the electricity is going haywire, indicating that Gabriel is absorbing it somehow. He is able to take out a significant portion of the staff before Dr. Weaver armed with a tranquilizer rifle, pops him and puts him to sleep. She then utters the phrase, time to cut out the cancer. After a lengthy opening credits montage, we cut to present day, presumably like 10 plus years into the future of the opening events. Madison arrives home, pregnant, having come from the doctor. She gets into a fight with her boyfriend who blames her for losing their previous children to miscarriage before slamming her head into the wall via a forceful punch to the stomach. She locks herself in the bedroom while he pleads with her that it won't happen again. After a while, she falls asleep, and her boyfriend falls asleep on the couch. A shadowy figure begins to mess with the electricity, causing the boyfriend to wake up and look around the living room. He is then surprised by the shadow, and his head is slammed into the wall so hard it breaks his neck. Madison heads downstairs, hearing the noise, and finds him dead. She then sees the figure, and it begins to chase her, and she runs to hide in her bedroom. The door is kicked open and sends her flying, and she slams her head on the ground, knocking herself out. At some point, the cops must have been called because they show up at her house, and she wakes up in a hospital with her sister, Sydney, attending to her. Her sister informs her that both her boyfriend and her unborn baby are dead. The next morning, Detective Shaw tries to question her, and she tells him of the strange hooded intruder. When Shaw confers with his partner, Detective Moss, she reveals that the boyfriend had numerous abuse allegations and this isn't her first miscarriage. She insinuates that the boyfriend probably beat on her and then she killed him in retaliation and blacked out. Later that night when Madison gets home, she gets spooked by being in the house alone and decides to board up the house just to be safe. Her sister shows up, having to climb through the window since Madison won't leave the bedroom, and they chat about how much time they had lost while she was with the abusive guy. She reveals to Sydney that she was adopted when she was 8 years old, and that's why she stayed with him, because she really wanted to have a baby. We cut to a woman giving tours to abandoned creepy locations, and she gets kidnapped by the hooded villain, and tied to a wall in its lair. Speaking through the electronics in the room using his psychic abilities, 
Gabriel tells her he plans on killing her, but not yet. He's got some other people to visit first. He steals a trophy that's shaped like a giant sword from Dr. Weaver's house and beats her to death with the base. However, the twist here is that Madison can see it all happen. At the same time that the murder is taking place, Madison was putting away laundry when suddenly the room shifted and she could witness the killing in person. She then snaps back to reality, waking up on the floor the next morning. The cops show up at Dr. Weaver's place and find her dead body. They find the base of the trophy, but the big sword part is now missing. We cut to the hideout and see Gabriel sharpening the big dagger while the woman tied to the wall tries to break free from her restraints. Back at Madison's house, she tells her sister Sydney she saw the murder happen in a vision. Meanwhile, the cops are digging through some of Dr. Weaver's patient files to try and track down a suspect. One of the photos in one of the files is a young Madison, although for some reason the cop doesn't recognize her right away. Later that night, Dr. Fields is on the phone and we see he is being stalked by Gabriel. We cut to Madison, waking up from her slumber, but into a dreamlike state where she sees Dr. Fields laying beside her. We watch as Gabriel crawls over her onto the bed and sits on his lap. However, his body is backwards. He brandishes the big gold dagger and starts stabbing Dr. Fields viciously. This causes Madison to wake up screaming. She runs and tells the police with her sister Sydney at her side, and of course Detectives Shaw and Moss don't believe him, but decide to check out the location anyway. They find Dr. Fields dead in his bed, just as Madison described. She has a sketch made of Gabriel, and it looks like somebody with a bunch of ground beef slathered all over their face. So Moth is extremely skeptical and thinks this is all a bunch of bullshit. Madison gets a phone call from Gabriel and then leaves with Sydney just as Shaw sees a picture of young Madison in the files from Dr. Weaver and finally makes a connection. Madison and her sister head to their family home and their mother shows them a tape of Madison from a birthday party when she was young. She's seen talking to herself and in other tapes using a toy phone to talk to someone. The mother says since Madison was abused as a child that they thought her imaginary friend was a way for her to cope. Following the clues, Shaw tracks down a third doctor who was involved with Weaver and Fields, a Dr. Gregory. He finds his address and heads there immediately, but it's too late. He's already dead. Madison is witnessing all of this go down in a vision simultaneously and tries to warn Shaw that Gabriel is still in the house, but of course, he can't hear her. Gabriel attacks Shaw, they scuffle, and Gabriel then flees out of the fire escape. Shaw gives chase, and this is by far the best scene in the whole film, as we watch Gabriel shift around his body parts, running backwards, doing flips into the air, and twisting himself around, and then running forwards or crawling on the walls upside down. Shaw catches up, trying to take down Gabriel, who gets the upper hand once again, before Shaw tries to shoot him. Gabriel makes a quick escape through a hole in the ceiling, and leaves Shaw out of breath, and even more determined. The following day, Shaw brings in a specialist to hypnotize Madison into recovering her old memories from childhood, and finds out that Gabriel is a psychic demon who used to try and talk her into killing her adoptive mother and her stepsister Sydney. Of course, this all sounds crazy to Moss, who still thinks she's behind it all. Meanwhile, the woman in the lair manages to cut herself free, but falls through the floor and BOOM! lands right in the middle of Madison's living room in front of everyone. She's been in her attic the entire time. And of course, this just makes her look completely guilty. Moss has her arrested, even though Sydney protests that she couldn't have done it, and the case is closed. During the interrogation, Gabriel calls Shaw's cell and informs him that he's coming for his favorite weapon, that gold sword trophy thing. They throw Madison into a general holding while they try and finish putting their case together and figure out who this Gabriel guy really is. Sydney visits her mom, gets the address to the hospital where Madison was adopted from, and finds out that her real mom is still alive. She finds these tapes which basically explain that Madison and Gabriel were actually conjoined twins, Gabriel suffering from all sorts of tumors and such, and living off of Madison like a parasite. The doctors one day decided that Gabriel was doing too much, cut off all his limbs and whatnot, and shoved what was left into Madison's skull before sealing it up. When her boyfriend knocked her against the wall, it cracked the skull open, which is what allowed Gabriel to reawaken and take over her body. The same thing happens in real time in the holding cell, as Madison is for some reason attacked by the other women in there, and goes into berserk Gabriel mode, ripping her skin apart and letting Gabriel show his face through the back of her head. Her limbs go all wonky, and he, using Madison's body, starts killing everyone and breaking out of the prison. 
We also find out that the woman who was in the attic has survived the fall and that she was in fact the real mom. Sydney tries to get to the hospital to protect her, but Gabriel arrives there mere moments later and a huge fight ensues. Eventually, Shaw arrives with Moss, but doesn't really get much done other than being knocked out or killed. Sydney tries to reach Madison by talking to her about sisterhood, and eventually Madison sets up a trap inside her mind, which uh, somehow contains Gabriel and then regains control of her body, but not before her real mom gets murdered. We hear a light begin to buzz in the corner, and then the credits roll. All in all, I give the movie about a 6 out of 10. It was most definitely not the horror film that the trailers made it out to be, but more of like an action movie, kind of like the live action Resident Evil films. It looks like since James Wan wasn't able to turn his Aquaman movie into a horror genre film, that he couldn't let go of the idea and thus created his own kind of uh, supervillain origin story. Wouldn't it be neat if this crossover was Shyamalan's Unbreakable Universe, even though that ended with uh, that really shitty Glass movie? Um, the film has an open ending, meaning that Juan or someone else will most definitely revisit the material, provided it does well in theaters and streaming. I can't help but feel slightly disappointed, though. There were relatively no suspense in the film, or horror, outside of a few jump scares placed throughout. And 40 minutes into the film, I had already figured out the plot, and that the evil in entity must be some sort of twin born full of malignant tumors that they removed and created some sort of psychic link and wants revenge, blah blah blah. However, if you're looking for a gory film with some cool stunts, then this film is tailor-made for you. The one big thing it has going for it is the performance of Gabriel, who is attached to the back of Madison, and so he has to contort her body and move backwards. It looks pretty cool, especially in the chase scene in the middle of the movie that ends in a cool choreographic uh, acrobatic fight scene. I want to thank you all again for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give us a like, share it, and subscribe to our channel. We are so close to 100 subs, we cannot wait to celebrate. If you're feeling generous, please check out our Patreon, link below in the description. You can reach out to us on Twitter at StudiosNet, or chat with us on Discord, link also below in the description. I've been your host, Raging Anybody, and before I go, mental health is important. Suppressing bad thoughts and memories doesn't make them disappear. They will always come back, and when they do, it's usually with a vengeance. Talk to someone either with friends, family, or a healthcare professional. You can only truly rise above your issues if you face them head on, and there is no shame in asking for help to do so. Thanks again. Take care.